Okay, guys and gals, this is Backyard Bill. I'm going to do a video on how to change the oil on a Kawasaki 300. This is a 200, 2013 model, uh, custom paint job, Krylon. Uh, I got a couple cameras set up just for giggles and grins to see how I do this thing. I'm experimenting with uh, cut and paste on the video thingy, so here we go. Uh, what you're going to need is you're going to need a 18 millimeter or 11 uh, 11 sixteenths or 18 millimeter socket. Uh, either or will work. Or kind of a little bit, uh, little uh, loose on the uh, the head of the uh, oil drain. Uh, you're going to need an oil pan, of course, and you're going to need oil and filter. Let me go get that. Uh, it takes approximately two quarts. If you don't change the filter, I'm going to change the filter, even though it's low miles. And uh, it takes 2.3 to 2.5, depending on how full you fill it, uh, to uh, fill it completely up. And uh, uh, I bought the, this one here from uh, an AutoZone. And uh, I bought the, the Mobile Racing 1040. That's what I always put in full synthetic. Uh, I don't know, y'all. You that's know, oil battles or oil battles. Y'all can put in it what you want. That's just what I put in it. Uh, it cost me roughly nine fifty to ten dollars a quart, depending on which place you get it from, Walmart, AutoZone, uh, O'Reilly's, wherever. Uh, as you can see, I don't have a whole lot of miles on my motorcycle. Not quite seven thousand miles. And that's because I have other rides. And I used to have a big old Harley sitting there, but I sold that. Uh, I used this mainly for just around town. I did take it up to the Dragon from here in northern Florida. I'm on the Panhandle, actually. Uh, out my window and down the street about four blocks is the, bay, uh, the Gulf of Mexico. So uh, let's get started on this here project. I've wasted two and a half minutes just boiling. All right, uh, what you're going to need is uh, these... There are two Allen stock Allen wrenches that come with uh, your kit that's in the back here of the of the uh, trunk. But uh, I use these out of my toolbox. It's easier to get to. Uh, there's a bolt here, bolt here, a bolt here. You're going to want to remove this. You don't really have to. Uh, you can you can reach inside here. I'm getting sideways on y'all. But here's the oil filter. You can reach inside here and, and turn it out, and then get down here where the plug is. Uh, if you can see it, let me get it up here. This is your drain plug. Uh, underneath, sideways, there it is right there. Uh, I'm not using a stand. Uh, I wanted to, I'm going to tilt the bike uh, manually to uh, drain all the oil out. So uh, you can do it without removing it, but this is so easy to remove and replace. Uh, I, I do it, you know, all the time. What you're going to want to do is have a screwdriver, a small one if you have to. And uh, you get underneath the edge of your little, I call them pop rivets, but they're not really that. It's just a little plastic uh, holder. You get underneath it. I had it popped loose there for a second. And you just pull it up. Let's see if you can see that. You get the screwdriver underneath and you pull it up. And it pops out. Then you can just uh, remove the whole thing. And now it's free of there. There's also one on the bottom. So I will uh, always put everything kind of sort of where near where I'm at. Okay, now the video is going to go cockeyed on you. Sorry about this, guys. So I can get up underneath here and uh, find my positioning on this one. There is a flat portion of it. Let's see if you can see this on here. Uh, I don't have a very good light. Let me get a light over here, guys. <laughs> oh, it's hard for me to get around, being old like me. Okay, let's see what we got here. See if I can get in there. You see that, uh, see that little flat lip right there? And that's where you need to put your screwdriver or whatever under, and then you can pop up the, the little rivet thing here, the holder. And that's what, that's what I'm looking for under here. I just can't see it because it's standing on my head. That's what I'm feeling for it. So, let's try this again. Oh. 
usually I try to keep it in there. Is that, that's exactly where I had it too. Uh, I try to keep it in the front so that it, uh, I know exactly where it's at whenever I try to take it off the next time. But of course, being an old fart like me, my memory ain't the best in the world. All righty, well, I'm just gonna stay on the ground. What the heck? Oh, that's, yeah. It's hard for me to get up and down and hard for me to bend over. So what we're gonna do here is move this one. Yeah, and I'm gonna post this, the whole dang video here, and if I can, I'll, I'll use these other, these other two cameras uh, and see if I can edit those in so you can see them back here in the back, how I work on it. Oh, guess what, my paint job. Oh, that's gonna be fun. My uh, paint wasn't dry when I put this back on, I guess, or maybe it's just because it's the Krylon that over the last two years, uh, that's how long I've had it on here for two years. Over the last two years, it might have gotten to the point where I'm not going to take it all the way off yet because I don't want it to just fall out. But over the last couple of years, it probably got soft, lost some of its uh, clear coat. You know, they didn't use the best clear coat in the world. And don't forget, you have these, uh, I call them spacers slash grommets, alignment grommets, alignment spacers, whatever you want to call them. Uh, the bike has them everywhere, so whenever you take them off, don't forget to... Uh, not lose those. I was going to try to make this like a 15 minute video. However, I doubt very seriously that I can get it done in that amount of time. So if y'all want to bear with me or just fast forward past these parts and get to the ex more important parts or just listen to me ramble on, however you want to do it. Uh, what you want to do is you want to, you want to pull this out and, and oh, uh, down, pull it out and see it pop loose. Of course, mine since it's been painted, it's going to be a major pain in the butt to uh, to get down because it's actually stuck to itself. And there you go. You want to put this off to the side. Ooh, nasty. I'll clean it up before I put it back on. Okay, so now, here we go. You can see what we got here. Oh, I'll get down here on the ground. I ain't too proud to lay down. Oh, there we go. So right here you have your filter. And right here you have your drain plug. And like I said, you could have reached in from the front here and reached down here on top and, and got your filter and unscrewed it. Yeah, it would have been pretty good. Uh, you wouldn't have to worry about taking all this off, which isn't really hard, all that hard to do. So we're ready for our, first off, we're ready for our oil pan to uh, remove the drain plug here. Very easy to do. Well, of course, it's not easy to do laying down on the ground unless you got a unless you can curl like 80,000 pounds the torque on it up. Uh, you'd have to look it up in the specs I'm not gonna look it up I'm an old mechanic and I pretty much do my own hand torquing I do have torque wrenches that I should use but I don't all the time okay as it's pulling out I want to take a gander at the oil that's on the end here um, everybody says there's a crush gasket and I do see there's there are actually two layers on this on this washer here so it actually might be crushable however I've changed my oil way too many times but I changed it a lot uh, changed it at 600 I changed it at 1200 changed it at 1800 I changed it at 3000 just because uh, that's what I do I change it like once every three or four months just to change it and you can see I haven't changed it for about four months now and uh, it's pretty dirty well more than four months actually about six months all right, what I usually do is I let it drain out as much as possible here. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is if uh, you guys don't know the trick to it, is I'm going to to swish wash the bike back and forth here. I'm actually going to hold the brake up here like so. Wrap my hand around the, the steering column and I'm going to grab my... Uh, I don't remember the name of these things. That's how bad I am at my memory. Shogun sliders, and I'm gonna tilt the bike towards me and just kind of lean it. And then just uh, lean it back. Lean it forward. I'm not putting the whole weight of the bike on me because I'm, as you can see, I'm not gonna try to crack the cowling. I'm, I'm using my hand, I'm using this hand to support the weight. 
so that it's not really leaning the whole bike over. I mean, I am leaning the whole bike over, but uh, I'm not putting the whole weight of the bike all on one point, other than the foot that's behind me. I see it draining. It's still draining. Um, the other thing, I, so I'm going to just leave it drain like that for a few seconds and point something out to y'all. A lot of videos, you'll see people wrap the uh, foil around uh, the top up here, around your pipe, so they don't get uh, around these pipes right here so that uh, you can direct the flow of the oil down into your pan. Well, if uh, you've seen some of them, no matter what, you still see the oil draining way back down here off of the off of the pipes, and you see this stuff on the pipes, and you wonder why. Well, that's because of these fins right here. All these fins, when that oil comes down, that foil that you put up here uh, allows it to go back, and it drains underneath these fins here, because, of course, you're always flat against the fins. It drains down behind these fins and just goes ahead and drips on your pipe anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try something a little bit different this time. I'm going to clean up underneath this filter here so that I can put a piece of tape under here and I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of tape under the filter. I'm just going to experiment. I haven't done this before. This is the first time on video, folks, so you can laugh all you want. And this is simply just a, a duct tape. It's a green duct tape. I don't know why I bought the green, probably for like a Halloween thing or something. But uh, I got this idea that I didn't want all my oil dripping or draining down back behind here. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it like so. And okay, we're dripping here, so I'm going to hold off on this for a second. Let me do my little tilt thingy real quick. Okay, I don't know uh, if you can see that. Probably not. My left eye. It's draining just a little bit more. So I'm going to sit here for just a couple seconds while it's draining just a little more. I mean, uh, it's probably just a minimal amount of ounces there that I just did that with. The other thing I want to do here, I forgot about this. I shouldn't have. <coughs> I should have actually taken this top off here to relieve the pressure in the crank and let the oil flow faster. But since it's already already out, that doesn't make any difference. I mean, you know, you know how when you use a, a gas can or something that uh, that doesn't have a vac, it, it creates a vacuum and kind of gurgles out slowly. All right, Let me clean off my bolt head here. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to put a little bit of the oil that was dripping out here. I'm going to kind of rub it around up there to get a little bit of a sealing surface going. I'm going to be moving my oil pan, so I want to tighten this back down. Now, y'all, folks that uh, haven't experienced a whole lot of mechanics, please buy a torque wrench. They're cheap. You can buy one through Harbor Freight for ten or fifteen dollars. That will that will do the, uh, the twenty foot pounds or so that you need to do for the bike. Now, I didn't do that. Um, I'm so accustomed. I've been a mechanic for over. 30 years and I'm pretty much accustomed to uh, torque values by by just feel pretty much all right what I'm going to do here is set up that little drain I was talking about let's see if this is going to work for us if it doesn't well it doesn't and if it does it does I mean I'll be happy about it but uh, slide my foil up under my over my pipe here push the tape against it oh I'm gonna tear the tape so we're gonna just make a uh, a dam in the back bring it up come on tape stick to the foil please and it's gonna try to make a little small channel 
and uh, run down our foil and into our pan, hopefully. How about that? Let's see if this works. Kind of doubt it, but we're going to see. I had to experiment, folks. You never know what could happen. All right, so what I'm going to do here is wipe my oil filter. Righty tidy lefty loosey, right? trouble that I have had with my body. All right, I broke her loose. Here she comes. Let's see if my little tape trick works. And I'm spinning it off. Letting the oil drip down in there. See, there we go. Oh, I am so sorry, folks. Anyway, I have to use the bifocals to see. I'm pouring out the oil here. And let's get a close-up of what it looks like here. Yeah. See what happened. Looky there. It ran straight down that tape. And I'm not seeing any going underneath. I'm going to leave it drain for a couple of seconds. It's still draining. Running on 16 minutes. Okay, this is as far as I really, uh, didn't th I didn't think it'd take me past 15 minutes, but I've been yakking and yakking and yakking, so. Okay, they're both just a dripping. That's pretty much uh, what we're looking at. I see no uh, metallic shiny things on my finger. The oil is fairly clean. It actually isn't all that dirty. But being in Florida, you have to be really careful about the sand. So. Here's our new filter. We'll take a little bit of this oil right here on my finger and I will lubricate the oil filter. Oh, ring, flat ring. Oh, another thing a lot of people have pointed out. And you've seen what I did there as I was wrapping, I was rolling my finger around the edge up here is to uh, check to make sure that this rubber ring didn't stick to the motorcycle and it didn't right here alrighty we have it all oiled up let's put the new one back on and I see that my yellow or green tape here kind of uh, went along the edge of my filter so I'm gonna pull that down a bit make sure that Make sure that it doesn't that gum. I can't see what I'm doing here. You can't see what I'm doing, should I say that? I want that tape to stick up underneath there. So here we go. Roll filter, rolling the filter back on. Now, there's also a torque for the filter, and some of you folks buy the uh, the uh, torquing bolt system, which is good. Personally, like I said, I've done many, many oil changes and many uh, projects on everything, so I can judge by pretty much putting something on, peeling my tape off, and wadding up my foil. Let's see what we got here. Bring in my light. Well, looky there. No oil on the pipe. Oops, sorry. Kind of shiny there where I had my finger, but there's no oil dripped on the pipe. Cool.
Not much to clean up, huh? Gotta like that. Alrighty then. Next up, we fill her back up. Yep. Out of the way. Out of the way. And I bought a small funnel for this purpose. I don't really use to use one, but hey, for a couple of bucks, why not? Oh, I needed to get up off the ground. Alrighty then. What'd we say? 2.2, 2.3. And we'll be good to go. Twenty minutes. I'm not making a very good video, am I? Yeah, and that's we go. Yeah, that's one. Looking at the sight window down there, folks, just to see uh, out of curiosity what's going to happen here. My stand felt kind of weird. I might want to check and make sure I haven't knocked it off my stand. And that's two. Two down. <clears throat> Once again. Now, with two in it, I can start seeing the oil coming up the sight glass. Of course, I haven't started the motorcycle. So, take a look at my stand real quick and make sure that yeah, it's on the cardboard, which is what's making it feel funny. I'm going to remove the oil here real quick so that I don't have open oil around my hot pipes. Alrighty then, what I'm going to do here, give it a quick start. Usually I don't like to start it up without a cap on it. Uh, you don't want to have, you know, get any blow by. I'm going to put it on there loosely. She is in neutral. Let it run through the filter. Last quart. Looking at uh, 2.3 is about right here, so I'll give her another quart, I believe. Or quart, listen to me. Another 600 milliliters. Is that what it is? Point three is a third, so we'll see. Give it a little bit of time to run down there. As you'll notice, um, I have uh, a lowering kit on mine, so my wife can ride it. This is why it's so low to the ground. But uh, as you can see, there's no oil in the window right now. And what I'm going to do 
just tilt it over a little bit. See if you all can see the oil come up in the window. It is level about right there. And I see no oil. And it's level. Tilt it past the See what happens. And I'm still not seeing oil. So, let's give her some more. I think the last time I did this, I did it about 2.5 uh, before it actually uh, showed in the window where it needed to show. Maybe 2.7, I don't recall. No, ah, that's not cool. I know it's not leaking out because it's not on the ground. And look what I did with the damn. Oh, I gotta wipe that off. Alright, now I tilted it past and it started to show. And I'm looking at my bags for level, my steering for level. And that's level and it's just starting to show on the window. Alright, we'll give her a little more here. And then I'll run it down the street. Real quick, before I put the, well, I guess I can put the cow back on. I'll give her a chance to, give her a chance to run down inside. And about level there. And it's coming up to the bottom of the window. Okay, what we're looking at here. Wish I had another set of hands to help me out here. I'd show you what I'm looking at. For all you guys that don't know, there's a mark right here, and there's a mark up here. It's an external bump in my window. It's sewing about right here right now. And I want it to be up about halfway, so I'll put a little bit more in. And that'll be about 2.7, not 2.5. I thought it was 2.2 to 2.5 last time I put it in, but, you know, not 2.7. And there she goes. Right in the middle. Black's about level. If you can see that, probably not. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do it with this one here. I'll bring this camera right here. And uh, we'll run it down. And we'll get it. Oh, it's not showing anything so I can't see the there we go yeah it's still rolling let me run it down to the lowest lowest position that I can get it and I'll give you guys a good uh, idea of what we're supposed to be looking at here as far as the sight window goes uh, maybe I can get this one to do it for you and that's what we're looking to try to get when the bike is level we want it to be right in that area somewhere in the half mark area so that's what we're looking to get all right cut and paste that in there hopefully I can do a little video editing and y'all can see what I do so running on 30 minutes now and I am definitely surprised that my Google Glass hasn't shut off it's at first alrighty then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna tighten everything back down and uh, Yeah, I'm painting it anyway this summer, so this coming summer, look forward to seeing <clears throat> the new paint job. All right, I'll show you some, folks, some stuff here. We have a tab we want to go over with, over on this edge down here, and under with the front tab, or over, with, over and under to lock it into place. Shove it up here. You got to bow it in. Ah, oh, come on. Head. Hey, sorry for cussing. Ah, <laughs> it's never what you want to do, huh? 
Uh, always on. Oh, sorry. Always on video. Yeah. Always catch it to where. Always fun, isn't it? Oh, I got everything in the way. Actually, you're supposed to have a. Supposed to be. Oh, come on, there we go. And roll it up. Roll it up. Roll it up, Bill. Yeah, wow. You can see the fun I have doing this, huh? And all you young folks probably do this in two seconds. Yeah, I'm gonna take my bike apart like once every three months and I have the same problem doing this. Maybe I should watch some of you guys' videos, huh? What do you think? Most of this is due because of the, the paint that I put on here. Uh, I painted the tabs too, so that's the... That's one of the reasons why it has the problem that it has when I'm putting it back together. There we go. Alrighty. Hole in the bottom. Push it in. Push it up. Yeah, it didn't feel right. Doesn't feel right. <laughs> I'm gonna make it activate here first. Put it in like so. The doctor is in. All right, let's see what's going on. <laughs> it's a little difficult for me to do. Uh, what I was doing is one of my feet is not going in the hole. And there we have it. Where's my flat spot? Flat spot in the front. And there we have it. All right, folks. See? You get to see my struggles. Struggles it were, huh? And now my jerky video. All right. Now, I wish I could call up on this uh, glass thingy, the uh, local time and temperature thing. It's kind of cool. Looking down here, see if you get that lined up. And we have that. All right, it is started. Alrighty then, folks. Uh, it took me 30 minutes doing this video, and uh, most of you folks who don't worry about talking are showing a little bit of this or a little bit of that or this little angle or that little angle, or and my video wasn't very good this time, but it is complete. And, uh, hey, we didn't get no mess on that pipe. I kind of like that little tape idea I just came up with. I hope you all uh, like it, too. And uh, I'm going to spin it up, warm it up, back it out. Well, I'm going to move those out of the way, don't I? And uh, take it for a spin since it's uh, January the 2nd or 3rd or something like that. And it's 71 degrees outside here in sunshiny Florida. Well, not sunshiny Florida, is it? And it's like... Uh, cloudy Florida. All right. This is Backyard Bill. Thanks for watching. See ya.